What's up everybody, I'm John. I'm Isaac. And today on Cars and Cameras, we're hoping to finish up our four-wheel drive Ford Bronco Power Wheels go-kart project. It's been at about 90% for a month. We have two major changes we still need to make. One being we need to change the steering ratio and just make a couple of other changes to our steering because it's just not great right now. And we're also going to change up our gear ratio just for a little bit less speed, a little bit better takeoff. Other than that, we're going to be prepping this thing, we're going to be painting this thing, and uh, final assembly. Putting the body back on. Absolutely. So, what are we doing? Man, <laughs> we're kind of winging this because uh, this is going to be tough. The, the packaging of this vehicle is so tight, y'all just would not believe the trouble we're having with suspension, uh, gearing, the, the four-wheel drive, steering, it, it all it all matters and it, it's just impossible. Show them the two liter man. We have a Coca-Cola two liter unopened from 1997. We will have an eBay bidding. <laughs> the reserve is set to five thousand dollars. But anyway, just to show you how tiny this vehicle is, we thought, you know, everyone's got a two liter, right? Oh, yeah. This chassis is like less than two two liters wide. It's like one and a half. One and a half two liters. And we have four wheel drive packed in there. We have an engine, we have steering, we have independent suspension. There's a lot going on in this project. So this packaging is really tight. Yeah, so. So how are we gonna fix it? Man, I, I'm not sure yet. We're gonna kind of wing it. We have some gears here. We have a chain, we have a steering shaft. We're just gonna try to throw something together that'll work better than what we've got right now, we hope. I'm gonna get started by removing our floor, changing okay. out our gear ratio. That should be pretty straightforward. That's pretty straightforward. And then, uh, yep, let me know if uh, you need some help with this. I, I'm i gonna go ahead and say now, yes, I need help yeah. with this. Cool. You, well, let me know what I can, can do. <laughs> can, can you tell me how to do this? Dude, you just put that right there, dude. You put the other one over there. Weld it up. Bada, bada boom, bada bang. Absolutely. Oh man. Simple as pie, baby. All right, I'll get on it. If you're not subscribed already, go ahead and subscribe because when we hit one million subscribers, Ike will chug this two liter soda. He just told me so before we started rolling. From 1997. Came out of the Nova. Did it? Yeah. Oh, it expired in 97. Cool. Look at that. So I'm sitting here trying to decide what sprocket size to switch to. We're going from a 40 to either a 42 or a 48. A 42 might not be enough and a 48 might be too much. But lucky for us, Go Power Sports sent us these sprockets and these are 420 split sprockets. So that means this is the last time we have to take this whole assembly apart. Because once this hub is on, changing sprockets is going to be a piece of cake. It's just uh, taking off the chain unbolting each side of the sprocket, taking it off, and then installing the new sprocket, and then adjusting chain length. So you can check out uh, Go Power Sports 420 split sprockets and hubs at links in the description of this video. They're perfect for a quick gear change because I'm gonna be working on this center section for probably 20 minutes, whereas it would rather be like a three minute swap. Go Power Sports sells a wide variety of sprocket sizes anywhere from this 42 for a 420 all the way up to like 66 and beyond. So anything from high speed to uh, stump pull and torque, they're gonna have something for you. So you can check out these sprockets, sprocket hubs at links in the description of this video. Anytime you place an order with gopowersports.com, let them know that Cars and Cameras sent you at checkout. They also hooked us up with this uh, steering here, which Ike is gonna talk about later once he figures out what we're doing with the steering. You figured it out yet? I'm working on it, buddy. Okay. So I'm going to get to work, and Ike is going to continue to rack his brain. One chain down, bud. Go ahead, the chain wax. Is the chain wax better? Oh, man. Yeah? Oh, yeah. Is it too late? We're gonna do some science. We have this uh, Tractor Supply brand liquid wrench chain and cable lube. We're gonna compare it to chain wax. Chain wax. I already applied the liquid wrench to this chain on the floor. We're gonna heat up the front chain 
on the furnace as you're supposed to. Well, well not on a furnace, but the, like, the go for a ride right. on your bike or three wheeler, four wheeler, whatever, and you get the chain nice and hot and then you spray it down with the chain wax and you let it sit for, I don't know, 15 minutes or so before you go to ride again. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna compare chain wax to chain and cable lube by liquid wrench. Chain wax. Go ahead and flip them, dude, and uh, let them simmer. Turn the heat down to medium low. No, let's just go ahead and do it now. And add seasoning and maybe some cheese right before you take them off. Moving on to the passenger side of the vehicle. Got to move, remove the brake, loosen the uh, pillow block over here, or the bearing hanger, and the whole thing should drop. I can finally change out my sprocket. How's it going? You done yet? I'm so done. <laughs> Figured I'd weld one side here and then I can bolt the other side up to it so we can change the bearing. Yeah. And then I've got this threaded rod which is the right width to fit in there. So that would be like right here. Okay. Then the sprocket could be right here. Okay. And then the big sprocket would be right here. Okay. And we'd run a chain to it. So it's going to be underneath the dash, but it's going to go, so it'll be about so. And this other and, one will do something. And then this, this is going to be kind of more over this direction. I, I wish it was more straightforward, but there's no room to do anything here. Yeah. So this is what happens when you start with a pile of parts that was like never meant to be put together. So there goes our sprocket. We were complaining about this thing last time because so much dead weight. And on goes our hub. Brand new one inch bore sprocket hub for split sprocket. Here we go. Chop, chop. Chop, chop. You know what one tack will do for now? For sure. All right, guys. So what I'm doing here is I am installing a mount for this upper sprocket. It's going to go something about like this and the steering shaft is going to attach coming off of this bolt up to here. So this is a gear reduction that we're doing to help ease the steering. little fun fact about these sprockets is that they line up right where the sprocket size lines up. So this is a 48, so you got a 4 and you got an 8, and it goes together like that. Not like that, not like that, but like that. Yeah, you actually did. Yeah. This one is correct. Yeah. yeah but <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying. Sprocket's a little big, Holmes. Yeah, it is. Um, so the problem with having a sprocket this size, well, the, the good thing is that we're going to have probably the perfect mix of acceleration and speed. The downside is that, well, now we're going to have uh, some uh, rubbing here between the chain and the chassis, and we got some low-hanging fruit. We're probably going to be catching I mean, all kinds of stuff. If you keep it tight, it'll probably be all right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, anyway there's a good chance we're going to knock the bottom of the sprocket on stuff as we drive by it. Possible. But I say we give it a shot. Go for it. Hey, what do you think of that chain? The lube on it. Oh. Oh, man. All right, we're going to go ahead and conclude the test and say that chain wax is indeed better. <laughs> before we even ride it. 
I mean, this feels properly lubricated. The other one is just greasy. steering wheel on the end of that thing and I'm gonna try to steer it with this on the ground see how it feels it's still tough well we'll just have to drive it you know driving around moving it's actually easier to steer rather than in place so the fact that it's still hard, but it turns faster, I mean, no, sorry. It turns slower, but softer, but it still turns fast enough. We'll just see what John thinks. While uh, John's off doing whatever he's doing, I'm just gonna take it upon myself to go ahead and set the steering up to fit me. And if John can't handle it, well, John should have been here. So let's, let's get to chopping and welding up some more. I can see that the steering wheel is further up towards me. I hope that doesn't, isn't going to hurt anything. I think it makes it a little harder to get in and out of, but Yeah. I, I give it I give it two thumbs up. I welded the uh, handlebars on upside down. It'll be fine, right? <laughs> I just won't tell them. <laughs> Alright dude. Don't, don't hate, hate me. You. Don't hate me. What do we got? Don't hate you. That's not a good way to set this up. There it is. It looks cool. It's a little higher up. It is a little higher up. Yeah. It is a little further back. Yeah. It's okay. Maybe. Try it out. It, it looks neat. I'm just like admiring the mechanism you got in there. Dude. Mechanism? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's all wrong, man. Yeah. Well. All wrong. Hey, at least you can steer it, though. Well, better. It's going to steer better when you're... Moving. Rolling, yeah. Um, it's it, it binds up a little bit because the joint is at an extreme angle. Oh, the, uh, uh, the universal U joint here. Okay. Yeah. Yep. So not. I couldn't help it. So yeah. I'm no, hoping you can do. when we drive it, everything will be cool. Okay. And you hadn't even said a darn thing about the steering wheel being on <laughs> upside down. <laughs> uh, I mean, I think this is. I think this is an, an improvement. It's a step in the right direction. Right. Can you deal with it being that high up? I think so. And yeah. Far Why not? back. Why not? Okay. Yeah. Is this more comfortable for you than it was before? No, nah, it's just what it's worked. Not, it's less comfortable. It's it's what worked. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I should be able to fit in this no problem. Now that the steering is done and our new chain and sprocket is installed, I'm going to go ahead and remove the engine and we're going to prep this thing for paint. What color are we painting it? Black, black. right? I guess. I think black's a awesome color. I feel like we shouldn't do splatter paint. It's, huh? Like we can do better than just black, right?
we got the frame basically disassembled enough where we can throw the self-etching primer on the bare metal and then we're going to come back with some black on the frame and some hammer paint brown on the lower suspension. Uh, so yeah, let's get to painting guys. So now that the primer is on the frame, I'm going to go have lunch and we're going to come back and this thing's going to be nice and dry and we're going to apply the rest of the paint. Oh snap. Done. Done. Sweet. Our primer has had time to dry on the chassis so now it's time to move on to color. Speaking of color, we are going to be painting the wheels white because that's what you typically see in a period correct. Ford Bronco. The chassis is going to be black and the control arms and other suspension bits are going to be this nice hammered bronze color. So our base coats are finished. It's time to move on to our clear coat. It's always a good idea, even if it's the same brand, even if it's worked in the past for you, uh, to do like a test area with clear coat and an inconspicuous area because there's no telling what it'll do, how it will react to the base coat. Does that make sense? Yeah. Good. I think this is the stuff that smells the worst. Yeah, clear coat smells horrible. Yeah. Ah, take a look. Looks okay, I think. I think it's good. All so right. we go for it. Like, you still think it should be all black, right? Yes. Dude, but the brown and black is actually pretty sweet. It's okay. I like it. Maybe yeah. maybe it'll look even better once we re-complete uh, it. I think it's good. It's not on the splatter paint level, I'm gonna say that. But it's pretty good. All right. I'm just wondering what it's gonna look like when we put that baby blue on it. All right, so now that the paint has set on this thing, I'm pretty happy with the way it turned out. Time to start assembling. We've got the springs, suspension, engine, wheels and tires. Let's get it together. Come in. Fuel tank repair. What's up? Oh, we're working on another episode. <laughs> yeah.
for the Broncos suspension has been put back together. I really like the paint scheme. Now it's time to install the wheels and then the body. So let's detape. <laughs> I'll get you back, dude. That was with some force. <laughs> Before the engine and exhaust goes on. Oh yeah, you gotta get a look. Probably gonna scratch the back. Black. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's no avoiding that one, man. I think it's cool, man. Yeah. What? You still not sold on it? On the color? Yeah. Nah. Oh. But it, I mean, it's good. It's gonna be the same color of the stuff it's running through. That's true. All right, can you uh, place our engine up there? Wow, this is extremely tricky. Whew, that's a job. Cool, it's on there. It is. Maybe just straight down. Just go for it. Just hit it. Oh, oh, found that point. Remember this thing was a pain. Yeah, it was a pain before that extra stuff. It's in there. Sweet. Oh, oh yeah. Looking good. Ooh. Ah, poopy. I mean, it is just Tight. touching. Oh. It's touching like right there. So literally one, two smaller sprocket would probably be fine. But yeah, washers works for me, dude. Ah, sweet. I had to put a little washer under here because the sprocket that we just installed. Okay, you're not putting any washers on this. Okay. Uh, is touching the floorboard just barely. Sweet. Man, a little uh, exhaust wrap on that exhaust. Man, it'll be ready to go. Awesome. Oh, yeah. Ready. All right. Let me roll it forward and backwards and check for... It's still crunching, man. No, that's the sprocket. Self-clear? Do you want to leave it up to the self-clear? Let's leave it up to the self-clear. That sounds good. Yeah. I think it looks good, man. Let's put a... Uh, we still need to clean up the body, but let's put this thing on here and see how it looks. Can I have assistance? Yeah, this one's a pain. It's tricky. I still think the bronze was a good call. I'm gonna die on that hill, man. All right, that's fine. The black looks good, the bronze looks good. I think it's turned out great. We still have a couple things left to do, that's for sure. Like, I mean, we still need to take a proper test drive with our new steering, yeah. but it's been so wet, and this paint still needs to cure over the weekend that we can't really do it right now. Yep. Because all our work will get undone. But dude, yeah, the white wheels looks good, the black frame is awesome, the bronze is awesome. Two thumbs up, man. I didn't think we'd get it together today. Yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. And this thing is complicated too, man. It is yeah. not simple. Oh. 
<laughs> it's almost a finished product, man. Almost. Yeah, it's right there. Yeah, I'm glad we uh, uh, unquickened the steering. It was brutal. Yeah. So, oh, I guess we can see about fitting the hood on it, but dude, it's all gonna have to get chopped out. It, we are gonna have to chop it up. And with the exhaust, it's gonna get melted, dude. We can't use the windshield. Yeah. Which I really wanted the windshield. Maybe we can take it off and make a couple of brackets coming up a little bit higher away from everything. Yeah. Uh, but the hood, it looks like we're gonna have to trim the hood pretty much. Right there. Yeah, pretty much right here. I think I'm up for it. So there's not going to be a whole lot of hood left. No. So. All right, but we do need the windshield on. I feel like we need this windshield on this thing. Yeah, I mean, we can build one out of plexiglass or something too. This windshield. Okay. I'll look for it. All right. Good. Thanks for watching this episode, everybody. I think our Bronco turned out awesome. It's a little bit too bad because it's just about to get trashed next time we take it out nah uh, anyway help us get to a million subscribers everybody go ahead and subscribe if you have not already to cars and cameras for future updates on our ford bronco build on our three-wheeler builds our mini bike builds go-karts all the small engine stuff you can find right here at cars and cameras so go ahead and subscribe get in before we reach a million uh, if you enjoyed today's episode leave a thumbs up if you want to do more than leave us a thumbs up Go to our website, cars-cameras.com, and pick up some of our high-quality merchandise to help support the channel. One of our It'll Be Fine racing tees, one of our It'll Be Fine hats. It's all good stuff. And, uh, yeah, check Ike here out on Faye, YouTube, and Instagram. On Isaac It'll Be Fine. That's right. Uh, check me out on Instagram at John underscore Cars and Cameras for sneak peeks behind the scenes on Cars and Cameras stuff. And Facebook at Cars and Cameras Reviews for snake, snake books. Facebook updates as well. That's a new one. It'll be fine. Thanks for watching again, everybody. We'll catch you next time. Clever? Yep. Oh, oh, <laughs> Did oh yeah. Take off? I took the ground off. Oh yeah. my gosh, man. Sorry. I man. just pushed the thing right off the. Just uh, testing your uh, welding uh, skills there, Chief. Yeah. You failed. How's that? You didn't check your ground.